Hey everyone, it's Will here from Single Track Magazine and SingleTrackWorld.com and this bike right next to me here is brand new from Specialized. This is the 2020 Specialized S-Works Epic Hardtail. Now this bike is all brand new for 2020. There have been a host of changes to make it more comfortable, more capable, but also very, very lightweight. We're gonna get onto some of those details in a moment. I'm gonna tell you about some of the unique features to the Epic Hardtail frame. And finally, I'm gonna tell you how it rides on the trail. We're out here at the North Star Resort near Lake Tahoe in America, and I've been riding a bunch of new specialized bikes, including the brand new Epic Hardtail. So what makes this bike unique? Well, for a start, Specialized claims you're looking at the lightest mass-produced carbon mountain bike frame on the market. How light? Just 790 grams. That is unbelievable. And uh, what's even more impressive is that number is actually Specialized being relatively conservative. Uh, we've got a frame here at the launch that we weighed, a medium frame, which actually came in around 760 grams. So um, incredibly lightweight. The previous S-Works Epic Hardtail wasn't exactly a heffalump. I mean, that frame had a claim weight of around 860 grams. So not a huge weight drop going to the new frame, uh, but it's about 10%. And if, in the world of weight weaning, that's a significant weight drop. What's perhaps more impressive is the fact that this whole bike has gotten quite a bit longer. Um, the whole bike has grown, so despite it getting bigger, it's actually gotten lighter. So how has Specialized gotten the weight down on this frame? Well, they've scrutinized the carbon fiber layout to ensure there's minimal overlap between all of the carbon plies throughout the frame. You'll notice that some of the tube diameters have actually gotten smaller, particularly the seat stays. These guys have been thinned out quite a lot. Now, aside from reducing weight, that's also increased rear end compliance, basically to make the bike more comfortable to ride. There's more or tire clearance in the back here so Specialized says you can fit up to a 2.4 inch tire in the back of this frame. The other key junctions have been slimmed down as well so the tapered head tube and also the bottom bracket junction has gotten quite a bit smaller in size. On the note of the bottom bracket Specialized has moved away from the PF30 standard so we've now got a good old-fashioned threaded bottom bracket. I can hear mechanics all around the world rejoicing at the uh, move from Specialized. This is something we've seen across a whole bunch of other Specialized models. There's been a general move away from the press fit bottom bracket systems um, to a standard thread in system so uh, the epic hardtail frame even though this is designed to be super lightweight purebred cross-country race bike we do have a threaded bottom bracket on this frame uh, we're told it's actually lighter though so the carbon fiber frame is co-molded with two alloy rings which sit on either side of the bottom bracket shell after the frame has been baked in the oven these uh, alloy inserts are then tapped uh, and the idea is that's designed to pr provide really precise alignment so the bottom bracket and the axle lines up nice and neatly inside there very very neat the other key change on this bike has been a move from the 27.2 millimeter seat post diameter to 30.9 millimeters. Now, normally that would mean increased weight and also increased stiffness as well. And what Specialized has done here is they've made the walls very, very thin. So even though the diameter has increased, the walls have gotten thinner. We've also got this lovely little curve down here just above the bottom bracket. Now this arced seat tube is designed to provide more compliance. So even though the seat post has gotten bigger in diameter, Specialized says the compliance level is actually the same as the previous frame. So still a nice smooth riding bike, but with that 30.9 millimeter seat post diameter, you have a load more options for fitting a dropper post on this frame. And fitting a dropper is something that cross country racers are increasingly looking to do. This frame will take a dropper post and you can run the cable internally through the frame and it'll pop out up the head tube. The other big change on this bike has been the geometry. Now to make it more capable for highly technical World Cup cross country courses, Specialized has slackened out the head tube angle by over a full degree. We're now at 68.5 degrees on the head tube angle. Not only that, but they're also running a reduced offset fork. And this is something we've seen on the full suspension Epic FSR model. We've gone a 42 millimeter offset on this RockShox SID fork here. And the idea with that shorter offset and that slacker head tube angle is to create more trail on the front of the bike. That's to give you more stable steering and reduce that sort of twitchiness and kind of nervous handling that you can get from very lightweight racy cross-country hardtails. The whole bike has also gotten longer so every size has grown in reach by about 12 to 14 millimeters. So we've got longer top tubes and the front center is increased in length and again this is all about improving stability on really steep rough technical cross-country race courses. With the top tube getting longer, Specialized has shortened the stem length, so we're now down to about 60 to 75 millimeter stem length, depending on the frame size. And that short stem kind of brings the bars back in towards the rider, so you don't end up with a huge reach to get down to the grips. That shorter stem also quickens up the steering a little bit, so even though we've got that slacker head tube angle and the reduced offset fork, the short stem helps to 
give the front steering a nice light kind of easy and agile feel. Make no mistake though, this is still a full blown cross country race bike. So the riding position is still fairly stretched out, fairly low at the front, nice short head tube on here. So you can get the bars down really low for a really powerful and efficient climbing position. The seat tube angle remains the same at 74 degrees. Likewise, the bottom bracket drop, that's about the same at 63 millimeters below the uh, hub axle line. And the chainstay length on the back of this bike stays the same at 430 millimeters. So some of the numbers have carried over from the previous model, um, and that's been combined with that longer reach, that slacker head tube angle, and the reduced offset fork as well. So I guess you're wondering how it actually rides on the trail. We've had uh, a really good chance to uh, get a feel for this bike on a nice long cross country ride here at the North Star Resort near Lake Tahoe. For a start, I mean, it's super light. This bike is, uh, it's under nine kilos for the S-Works Epic Hardtail. Very, very lightweight. Carbon fiber Roval wheels. We've got fast track tires front and rear. These are 2.3 inches wide front and rear. So a nice high volume tire that you can run at relatively low pressure to get a little bit more comfort. Speaking of comfort, that's probably the biggest difference I've noticed on the new bike compared to the previous S-Works Epic Hardtail, a bike I spent a decent amount of time on. Those thin seat stays and that curved seat tube combined with the high volume tires does really, really well to kind of soften out the harsh edges on rocks and roots on the trail. So uh, surprisingly comfortable to ride uh, given this is a lightweight racy hardtail. But that's definitely one of the biggest differences I've noticed over the previous generation Epic. Um, the other difference is the front end handling. So all of those changes, that increased ground trail that's come from that slacker head tube angle, um, it does give it a lot more of a planted feel on the descents. Um, it's still a, you know, it's a still a very lightweight, uh, crisp handling hardtail, and there's no problems at all slicing and dicing this bike through tight, twisty single track. But definitely the front end does feel a little stickier. It feels a little bit more planted on the descents, particularly through high speed berms. You just get less wiggle through the front wheel. And this was something I've experienced before on the full suspension Epic, which also has that reduced offset fork. Uh, and it provides a noticeable difference on this lightweight hardtail. So definitely a big improvement in stability, but still with that crisp handling, that fast acceleration, and that super low weight um, that makes this bike absolutely deadly on the climbs, but now also very deadly on the descents as well. So far, I've been very impressed with this new S-Works Epic Hardtail. There'll be a range of different models in the Epic lineup for 2020. Now the top S-Works models, there'll be a couple of those. They'll be running that FACT 12M carbon fiber frame. That's the sub 800 gram carbon fiber frame. There will be a FACT 11M carbon fiber frame and that will be specced on the Pro, Expert, Comp and Carbon 29 models. Now that adds about 140 grams. Bear in mind, that still brings the frame weight under a kilo, so still very lightweight. And of course, the overall shape and geometry stays the same throughout the line, whether you get the top-end S-Works model or the entry-level Carbon 29 model. If you want more information on the full 2020 S-Works Epic hardtail range, make sure you go to singletrackworld.com to read my story about this new bike. You can read all about the technical details on here, see all of the prices, UK availability, and uh, full spec list on each of the models. If you've got any questions for me about this bike, make sure you drop them into the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for plenty more video reviews coming your way in the near future. All right, that's it from me guys. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Tooroo!